Hi everyone, my name is Megha. I'm an architect, urban designer, and PhD scholar from India. This is my brand new channel, Archi PhD, where I will be sharing information about PhD admission process, planning PhD years and beyond in a clear and concise format, especially for architects, planners, and related field professionals. Usually in India, regular PhD admissions happen twice a year while admissions through rolling advertisements occur throughout the year. Every year, the number of applications submitted for a PhD program is increasing. I personally have seen many such applications getting rejected or turned down due to basic mistakes that jeopardize the admission chances of many prospective candidates. The reasons range from lack of information, incomplete or inappropriate applications, or missed deadlines. So, in order to avoid these mistakes, my very first video is solely dedicated to provide information on things to remember before applying for a PhD program in India. So let's begin. Point number one, before applying, you should have a basic idea on your PhD topic. It is a valid question to ask yourself once you even think of undergoing doctoral studies. Think what interests your curious mind in various broad fields, such as climate, energy, sustainability, conservation, etc. Recall your experience in field or classroom assignments. You can even start reading some good quality journal papers by accessing them on Google Scholar. Or even look at some of the PhD titles from Indian research repositories like Shodh Ganga and Shodh Gangotri, links to which is provided in the description box below or you can even see through research repositories of universities abroad. Please remember, your PhD topic selection should not necessarily depend on any of the previous degree dissertation topics. So take your time and brainstorm ideas. Point number two, list down reputed university offering PhD degree courses. Most of us are aware that in India, there are a num limited number of architecture and planning colleges that have a well-established PhD structure. But due to governmental efforts for boosting PhD research, several colleges have started or trying to start their PhD program that may come under your radar. So first, make yourself aware of these colleges. I'm listing here a few of them, like IITs, NITs, SPS, and other CFTIs, or Centrally Funded Technical Institutes, the link of which is provided in the description box below. Point number three, before jumping into filling forms, it is essential to know your current priorities and deciding on university location. PhDs are generally undertaken in our late 20s and everyone has different priorities in their life. So think in terms of purpose of doing a PhD, suitability and convenience. Maybe you want to stay close to your family or want to go for a part-time degree in order to continue your job or maybe university reputation and ranking matters you the most. In any case, university locations also plays a major role in terms of weather, language, food, accommodation, city life, and geographical location. Trust me, a major amount of time also goes outside the department. As a PhD student, it is crucial for you to take care of your overall well-being by maintaining a healthy work-life balance. Point number four, please. Please read PhD brochures carefully and check your eligibility. No matter if latest one has not yet been uploaded, check the previous semester one. These are freely available on university websites. Do not skip any detail. Read about PhD program eligibility like whether you need a GATE score or not, and what is the cutoff. What are the different types of PhD programs offered by this university? Note monthly scholarship and fees. Also, Process of selection, whether there will be a written test plus interview or only interview. Most importantly, note the deadlines. What were the deadlines for previous semester? Make a guess on the upcoming one if you are looking at previous semester's brochure. In addition, put your investigation cap on and see the admission trends. What were the number of short shortlisted candidates for interview last year and how many were finally offered the seat? Through this, you will get an idea on the increasing competition for PhD admissions in that university. Point number five, dig deep into reading faculty profiles. 
in relation to your chosen broad area of research. Try to find faculties who share a similar research interest. Look at their quality and quantity of publications, number of PhDs guided or existing number of PhD candidates. Look at their academic achievements, international collaborations, funded research projects, invited talk, or any note for prospective PhD students. Invest some time on this one. Point number six. After getting some basic information, a very important step is to contact the existing students, which many aspiring PhD students somehow don't think in the first place. In this age and era, it should not be difficult to track down and connect with people working in the department of your choice. But do remember, please do not expect too much information. At this stage, basic information is enough, like work pressure, ethics, role of supervisors in PhD, etc. Please be courteous to them, just don't push. Try to be professional in your conversations. You can even try and contact recently pass out students to gather information on post PhD employability scenario. Point number seven, create your own priority list based on all the above points like your chosen broad areas, university location, PhD eligibility, rules and regulation, faculty profiles, interactions with other PhD students, and most importantly, your basic instinct. Point number eight. Once you have done all that, it's time to finally contact the professors professionally. Understand, PhD is not like an undergraduate or postgraduate degree. It is a different ball game altogether. You need to be alert and diligent enough for achieving your goal. Contacting professors through email before interview is always a welcome move. Email interactions initiate dialogue. Try to contact them one month or few months before the interview. Be polite and clear while you introduce yourself. I will be coming up with a separate video to detail out on this point. Nevertheless, while you have initiated talks with the professor, it is time to fill the form, which I will be discussing in my next video. I hope this video helped clear some doubts and I will be happy to receive comments in the comment section below. So see you next time. Bye-bye.